Recently, one of my viewers sent me a copy of the 2016 English paper. Without further ado, let's begin. Section 1. Number 1. I have no idea when she came, will come, has come, comes next time. Number 2. Will come. Inside a when clause, if you use will, then that clause expresses a future time. Let me know when she will come versus let me know when she comes. The former sentence means I want to know the time of her arrival, whereas the latter sentence means I want you to notify me as soon as she arrives. Let's move on. Number two. In spite of, despite that, instead of, even for, being extremely rich, Anne was not satisfied with her life. I would say number one. In spite of. The phrase in spite of is synonymous with the preposition despite, and because in spite of ends in the preposition of, it requires that the following word be either a noun or a gerund, like in this case, being. Number three, I enjoy going for, to go for, going to, to go to, a walk every weekend. Enjoy is a verb that requires a gerund, so number two, and number four must be eliminated. We don't say go to a walk, we say go for a walk. So number one. Question number four. This bag was so heavy that she had to have, let, get, make, mic to help her carry it. These four verbs are all causative verbs, but number three, get, is the only verb where you can put the word to after Mike. The other three verbs take the form causative verb plus person plus do. For example, have you do, let you do, and make you do. Number five. Discussed of, discussed with, discussed about, discussed the problem with the economic system. Number four. The verb to discuss is a transitive verb, so you shouldn't add any prepositions like about, with, or of. Number six. This picture leave, recollect, remember, reminded her of happy memories from her past. You should be able to tell immediately that the correct answer is number four, reminded. Not only does the verb to remind take the form remind, person, of, noun, but the other three verbs are in the wrong form. What do I mean by the wrong form? If you look at the subject of this sentence, the subject is this picture. The noun phrase this picture is a third person singular noun, which means that the verb in the predicate must end in either s or ed, but leave, recollect, and remember have no inflections. Number seven. We doubt if Mary came, will come, comes, come, the day after tomorrow. I would say number two. As I explained in question one, this if clause doesn't express a condition, in which case you can use will. Instead, this if clause expresses two possible outcomes. One outcome is that Mary will come, and the other is that she won't come. Number eight. Kate is often spoken by to, by, to by, to, Japanese, on the street. I would say to by. Kate is often spoken to by Japanese. The preposition to is necessary because we say person X speaks to person Y. And the other preposition by is necessary because this is a passive sentence and the noun Japanese expresses the doer of the speaking action. Number nine. How like wonderful, nice, about, going fishing. I'd rather go shopping. Okay, number four. How about going fishing? You use the phrase how about doing something when you want to suggest an activity to someone. Number ten, to get. This clause headed by the preposition for is an infinitive clause and in an infinitive clause the verb has to be preceded by the word to. Number eleven, for, but for, with, owing to, a little more patience, Nancy would have succeeded. Since the main clause says would have, the main clause implies that 
Nancy, in fact, didn't succeed. So we need number three, with a little more patience. Number twelve, Mary was afraid of being not able, not being able, to be not able, not to be able. Number two, afraid of not being able to meet Tom tomorrow. This word of is a preposition, and as I said earlier, prepositions must be followed by a noun or a gerund, so we can eliminate number three and number four. And between one and two, the negation not usually comes before the gerund. Number thirteen, observing, seeing, seen, taken from a distance, the mountain looked like an animal. I would say number three, seen. This is a participial phrase, and in a participial phrase, when the subject of a participial phrase is omitted, we can assume that the hidden subject is identical to the subject of the main clause. In this sentence, the hidden subject is the mountain. Now that we know the hidden subject, you have to ask yourself, does the mountain see or is the mountain seen? And of course, the answer is the latter, because mountains cannot do the seeing action, but mountains can be seen from a distance. Number 14, there is no one here who can treat at, perform, splash, deal with. Number 4, deal with. All I can say is that the other choices make no sense. Number 15, there is hardly some, any, no, a little water in the river. Number 2, there is hardly any water in the river. The adverb hardly is a negative word, so it's similar to saying there isn't any water in the river. Section 2, number 1. If he comes at 3 o'clock this afternoon, I had finished, will already have finished, already finish, have already finished, my lunch. I would say number two because we are talking about the future. Number two, the hotel has been constructing, is constructing, is being constructing, is being constructed on the beach. Number four, a building can be constructed but it cannot construct another building. Number three, I owe what I am for my teacher. My teacher on what I am, what I am to my teacher, my teacher to what I am. I would go with number three. The verb to owe takes the form to owe something to someone. Therefore, the answer is number three. Number four. If we hope to have a big influence, we have better, we had to, we've got, we will have to, consider doing a campaign. If you look at the verb after the blank, it is in the bear form or the dictionary form, which means that we can get rid of one and three, because neither can be followed by a verb in the bear form or the dictionary form. So we are left with either number two or number four, and I would say number four we will have to, because we are obviously not talking about the past. As you can see from the present tense verb, hope, in the subordinate clause. Number five, you should have seen, ought to see, may see, might see, their faces when I told them about your idea. You have to notice that the subordinate clause is in the past tense, which means that the answer has got to be number one, should have seen. Number six, when are you leaving? When were you leaving? When have you left? When did you leave Tokyo? Yesterday. I would say number four. When did you leave Tokyo? Judging from the second sentence, we are obviously dealing with an event that took place in the past. So one and three are out of the question, which leaves us with either two or four. It wouldn't make sense to say when were you leaving Tokyo. We would simply say when did you leave? because we are talking about a simple action that took place in the past. Number seven. If it were not for, if it were not, were she not for, if she were not, her bad temper, she would be a kind friend. Uh, number one. If it were not for. This is kind of like a set phrase that you have to remember. And this phrase means the same as without. So without her bad temper, she would be a kind friend. Number eight. Is it possible for me? Is it capable for me? Am I possible? Is it able for me to see him next Friday? Number one. 
Is it possible for me? Number nine. Smoking is bad for our health. The same as not mentioning to say nothing of. Needle to say. What the hell? Being a public nuisance. This is another phrase that you simply have to know. To say nothing of, which is synonymous with the phrase not to mention. Number ten. He could not accept any of the ideas because he found either of them, any of them, none of them, neither of them. Satisfactory. I would say number three, none of them. Number one and number two can be eliminated because we need a negative word, and the word neither can only be used when you are talking about two ideas. But if you look at the main clause, it says any of the ideas, which means that there were at least three ideas. So when you are dealing with more than two. Objects or ideas, then you have to use the word none. Number eleven. That was the most wonderful movie I have ever seen. I never told you that. Okay. You cannot ever say that. Why not? I can hear you once again. Okay. You can say that again. Um. You can say that again. Number twelve. However, she tried hard. How hard she tried. However, she tried hard. However hard she tried. Whoever made this exam was extremely careless because we've got two identical choices, and the correct answer is number four. However hard she tried. The wh word, however, must be followed by either an adjective or an adverb. In this case, we've got the adverb hard. Number thirteen. Why don't we go shopping next Saturday? I don't care. That's a good idea. Never mind. You should go too. Number one, I don't care, is just rude. Number three, never mind, and number four, you should go too, make no sense. So we are left with number two. That's a good idea. Number fourteen, check the magazine, and you will know what time will the game will be on. Does the game start? The game will start. The game start. The only possible choice is number three. There cannot be subject inversion, which means that the clause must start with the subject. Number fifteen. I would like to speak, Mrs. Kate. Um, this is not right. I would have said I would like to speak to Mrs. Kate, and I don't think the name Kate is a surname. But anyway, I am sorry, but she does not in any more work here. Any more does not work here. Here, any more does not work. Does not work here anymore. Okay, four. Usually, the adverb here comes after the verb. Similarly, the phrase any more usually comes towards the end of a sentence. I must say, this exam is very sloppy. Section three a. Once in a town in America, all life. All life, um, all life. I think it has to be a verb. Seem to live in. In has to be followed by a noun. In uh, in harmony. In harmony with its surroundings.、Uh, four seasons.、Um, I would say through four seasons. Many beautiful scenes were seen everywhere. Soon the situation changed. A lot of lives、um, disappeared from strange diseases and died suddenly. Voices and sound. Voices and sound.、Um, ma, 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 ma. I think it has to be voices and sound disappeared. So that means that. A lot of lives suffered from strange diseases and died suddenly. Voices and sound disappeared, and and silence lay over the、um, silence lay over the. This can only be an adjective, I guess. Many, but that means that D cannot be many. So what else can it be? I guess the. Beautiful scenes. That was a bit difficult. Section three B. The detective story is a 
popular type of fiction in which the solution of a crime is traced step by step. Edgar Allan Poe's Murders in the Rue Morgue is considered the first modern detective story. In the average story, the chief characters are fairly predictable. The detective, the person who unravels the mystery with considerable ease in the last chapter, is customarily an eccentric uh, genius like Sherlock Holmes, who appears in a series of adventures by the British author Conan Doyle. Nothing escapes the eyes of the detective, who, after a brief and apparently superficial um, inspection, can picture the scene of the crime in detail days or days or months later. Often, the detective is supplied with a friend or assistant who narrates the event of the story. The assistant usually possesses less acute powers of observation than the master. It is quite routine for the detective to stage a little test in which the guilty party reveals himself. The assistant is usually um, usually speechless with amazement, while the detective, on the contrary, is wholly calm as he points out the flaws in the criminal's plan. This was much easier than the previous one. As always, you should go straight to the questions. Question 1. Which of the following words is closest in meaning to outlook? Research, viewpoint, experience, appearance. Uh, number two, viewpoint. I was able to answer this question because I knew what the word meant. But in case you didn't know, you have to find the underlined word in the passage, which is here. You have to replace the word with each of the choices and see which one makes the most sense. Question two. The missing word in A is additionally, in addition, Instead, neither, number one and number two mean exactly the same thing, so these two options can be eliminated. Let's find A and be specific. Blank of saying, okay, instead of saying, you would never say neither of saying. The phrase neither of is usually followed by a plural noun. Question three. Why does the author think I want to look great is not a good goal to set? One, it is not a long-term goal. Two, physical beauty is not important, unlikely. Three, it is not realistic, um, unlikely. Four, it is not specific, possible. So let's find this sentence in the passage, okay? Or rather than I want to look great, try I want to lose 10 pounds this summer. And if you go back a little bit, it says be specific. So number four, saying I want to look great is not specific enough. Number four, the author recommends all of the following except short-term goals should be made before long-term goals. Imagine yourself achieving your goals. Very sensible. Three, give yourself positive feedback, likely. And four, have fun, uh, possible. Before even reading the passage, I would say number one, Short term, long term, long term, short term. Okay, now that you know your long term goal, write down your short term goal. This implies that you should set your long term goals first. Number five, which of the following best represents the author's ideas in this passage? One, people should make a plan to what? Loose. This is a common spelling mistake. Wait so they can be proud of their bodies. Okay. Number two, focus on the details of your plan and take each step very seriously. Three, set easy short term goals in order to achieve your long term goals. Very likely. And four, be ambitious and think about achieving big dreams. Um, okay. I would say number three, so let's find out. Step two, short term goals. Be realistic, start small. Uh, step three, reinforce it. Visualize yourself achieving the goal. Step four, enjoy the process. 
I don't think number one is the answer because losing weight or being proud of one's body is not the main idea that the author wants to talk about in this passage. And number two is incorrect because the last step said have fun, which is the opposite of taking each step very seriously. And number four doesn't sound correct because the passage said small steps. Again, let's go straight to the questions. Question one, according to the article, what is true about the info ladies? Who are these people? One, they drive from village to village. Two, they have no medical training. Three, their work is easy. It doesn't sound likely. Number four, they sometimes find themselves involved in the village's personal events. Let's go and find the info ladies. In Bangladesh, info ladies ride bicycles door to door to connect small villages to the world of information available on the internet. Okay, uniform, laptops, uh, personal business, a session costs a fortune, willing to pay, a chance to chat, no doctors, also trained to test blood pressure and blood sugar levels and can save lives, chat with my friends online, use of fertilizer and insecticides, uh, filling college application forms, training to deal with any technical problems, often find themselves interacting with villagers on a more personal level, photos, videos, weddings, birthdays, courtship, 56, start at 6 a.m., a three-month training course. I skimmed through the passage and I think I got the general idea. Back to the question. They don't drive, they ride bicycles. They do have some medical training. Their work is not easy, so number four. Number two, the following phrase could be put in the article. Where would it best fit? The work is not easy. One, two, three, five. Number one doesn't make sense because the concept of info ladies hasn't been introduced at this stage yet. Number two, it would be very weird to say their work is not easy at the end of this paragraph. Number three doesn't make sense. Why would it be followed by a quotation? So that leaves us with number five. Their work is not easy. They start at 6 a.m. and ride to different villages throughout the day. The following sentence does talk about how demanding their work is. So I would go with number five. Question three. Which word from the list below means the same as equivalent? Similar, equal, approximately equalize. Um, two, equal. Again, I already knew the definition of this word. Number four. The missing word in four is attendance, take part, experiencing, going to, which can lead them to blank in weddings, birthdays, and even courtship. Lead them to take part in weddings? I guess that makes sense. Number five, which of the following is not supported by the article? Most people in Bangladesh do not have regular internet access, which is true. Internet connectivity is primarily used for business purposes in the villages. I think people use the internet for personal purposes as well. So number two seems like the answer, but let's read the rest. The number of info ladies will increase in the future. The passage did mention this. Info ladies can assist with basic medical care. This was also mentioned, so number two is the correct answer. Section 6. Once again, let's go to the questions. These look like true or false questions. Question 1. The author believes I don't know is harder to say than I love you. For most people, it is much harder to say I don't know. So that makes Question 1. True. Question 2. Admitting what you don't know will make it easier to learn new things, which sounds plausible. Until you can admit what you don't yet know, it's virtually impossible to learn what you need to. I guess that makes the second sentence true. Number 3. The article discusses two main types of knowledge. This is a sentence that has to be verified by actually reading the passage, so let's go. Different levels and categories of knowledge, known facts, beliefs, 
we hold to be true but may not be easily verified. I think these are the two types of knowledge. I guess number three is true. Number four, according to the author, the composition of water is a belief. Well, I highly doubt that. So F, number five, with complex issues, one or two key facts can easily be pinpointed as the key driving factors. Sounds false, complex issues, hard to pin a particular cause on a given effect. Yep, so number five is false. The article talks about understanding events in both the past and the future. For events that have already happened, just think how much harder it is to predict what will work in the future. Prediction. So the passage does talk about the past as well as the future. So true. Number seven. Professor Tetlock's study took place over a few years. Let's find this name. Um, Philip Tetlock, he charted over the course of 20 years, so it's much longer than a few years. So false. Number eight, the author thinks beliefs should not be questioned. I don't think so. False. Number nine, the experts that participated in Professor Tetlock's study were all government officials. Government officials, political science scholars, that's enough. Number nine is false. Number ten, according to Tetlock's research, most experts believe they know more than they do. What? These most experts of experts? 90% of them thought they knew more than they knew. So number 10 is true. This is the end of this exam paper. Thank you for watching and see you next time.